What's up everyone, Patrick here. Welcome back. Moving on to another question dealing with classifying triangles. So we are given this triangle here with the vertices eight, negative five, negative five and eight, and then five and 10. And we have to classify it and then find the area. So we've gone through examples and tools of how to classify the triangles. Hopefully you're watching this on the site where all of this is in order. If you're watching this on YouTube, highly recommend you going to this site, which you can find a link to in the description box because there's a specific order that I'm going in. I go through some preliminary tools beforehand that are used, such as the Pythagorean identity, for example, that are gonna be used in this video in helping and classify the triangle. So. Just in general, the steps that I go through personally, your teacher may go through different steps, by the way. What I do is I first find the three side lengths of the triangle, the three lengths, and then I use those lengths to go through a two-step process. So I first see how the lengths relate to each other. So if two of the lengths are the same, then we know it's an isosceles triangle. If all three of the lengths are the same, then we know it's an equilateral triangle. And if all of the lengths are different, then it's a scalene triangle. And then once I have that, in number two, in the second step, I see how the angles of the triangle relate. And that's where that Pythagorean identity comes in, seeing how that a squared plus b squared relates to that c squared. And from there, we could tell whether we're dealing with a right triangle, whether one of the angles is 90 degrees, whether we're dealing with an acute triangle where all of the angles are less than 90 degrees, or whether we're dealing with an obtuse triangle where one of the angles is going to be greater than 90 degrees. So that's the two-step process I go through, really a three-step process, because the first step is finding all of the side lengths. And then once I have the side lengths, I go into these two classifications. So what we got to do is basically find the side lengths. So the length between two points, just as a review, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, and that's all gonna be square rooted. So let's first find the length of AB. So let's let this be x1, y1. I'll let this be x2, y2. So we'd have the square root of x2, which is negative five, minus x1, which is eight. That's gonna be squared. Then we'll have y2, which is eight, minus y1, which is negative five. Be careful here with the negatives and then that's going to be squared. So over here, we'd end up with negative 13 squared. Over here, we'd have eight plus five, right? The two negatives turn into a positive. And so we'd have negative 13 to the power two, which would give us 169. And then uh, over here, we'll have 13 squared, which would give us 169 as well. So we'll have 169 plus 169. And then the sum of those two is going to give us 338. So AB, let's keep track of it on this side here. It has a length of root 338. And I'm going to leave it like this as an exact value. You can get the decimals if you want, but I recommend leaving it in this format because once we plug it into that Pythagorean identity where we're going to be squaring the lengths, this squared the square root is just nicely going to go away and we're just going to have a 338 there. Right? So I recommend just leaving it uh, in that format. Unless if you get a square root and it's smooth, it gives you an integer, then that's fine. You could plug in the or keep track of that integer, but that's going to be a decimal there. So I'm going to just leave it in that format. So next, let's find the side length of AC, all right? So we have A as X1, Y1, and then C, let's label that X2, and then Y2. So notice that both of these are still gonna be the same, right? The X1 and then the Y1. So then we'll have X2, which would be five, and then Y2 over here, which would be 10. So we'd end up with negative three to the power of two plus this here, negative, negative, 
10 minus negative 5 is the same as 10 plus 5. That's going to be squared. So we'd have negative 3 to the power of 2, which is 9, plus 15 to the power of 2. And then 15 to the power of 2 would give us, uh, what, 225? Like that. And then we'll have 225 uh, plus 9, which would give us 234, root 234. Okay, and again, I'm going to leave that as an exact value. So the length of AC is equal to root uh, 234, sorry. Right? Yeah. Root 234. And then let's find the length of BC. So we'll have x1, y1 over here. So we already have C. You know what? Let's just erase this. So we'll have the square root of x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is negative 5. Right? Be careful with the brackets here. Plus y2, which is 10, minus y1, which is 8. So this would end up being uh, 5 plus 5 squared plus 2 squared. This would end up being uh, 10 squared plus 4. 100 plus 4 would give us 104. So we'll have root 104. So BC, the length of BC is root 104. All right, so we have all of the side lengths. And now we can go through that two-step process. So the first step, how do the lengths all relate? Well, notice all of the lengths are different. And so when you have a triangle, all with different side lengths, then you know you're dealing with a scalene triangle. So the first step in that classification, we have a scalene triangle that we are dealing with. And then the next step, which takes a little bit more work, is we want to use that Pythagorean identity and see whether a squared plus b squared is going to equal c squared, right? If this happens, then we have a right triangle. If a squared plus b squared is going to be less than, you know what, I think let's go greater than. It's going to be greater than c squared, whether that left side is going to be greater than that right side. If that happens, we're going to have an acute triangle. And then if a squared plus b squared is less than that right side, if the left side is less than the right side, then we have an obtuse triangle. And so we basically want to label these sides as either a, b, or c. The a and the b, it doesn't matter. Those are always going to be the shortest sides. It's just the c, you got to make sure it's always the longest side. And between all of these, which is the longest side? Well, it's this 338. So let's let that be c. We'll let this be a. We'll let that be b. And so let's see how does a squared plus b squared relate to c squared. So we'll have a squared. The a is the root 234. So we'll have root 234. That's going to be squared plus the b which is root 104, that's going to be squared. And then we're going to have the C, which is root 338. And then that's going to be squared. And so from here, root 234 squared, that's just 234, right? That's why going back to leaving it as an exact value like that, it's because here, notice how we're just going to get nice numbers. So root 104 squared, that's just going to be 104, and then root 338, that's just going to be 338. And then add these, notice, what do we get? We get the left side equaling the right side. So out of all of these cases, it's this case over here. So we're actually dealing with a right triangle. And so the final classification of this triangle is that it's a scalene right triangle like that. 
Okay, so we have a scalene right triangle, and now we got to find the area. And now that we have a little bit more information, we can create a more exact diagram. So it's a scalene right triangle. So we know that all the sides are going to be different. So let's let this be a shorter side. We could have this be a longer side. And then we could have the hypotenuse right there. And then that's the 90 degrees. So here, notice that the hypotenuse is AB, but then notice the shortest side is BC. So we want the B to be right there, right? And then we'll have the A over here, and then we could have the C right there, right? So the AB is the hypotenuse, the longest side. The BC, it's the shorter side, and then the AC. It's that side that's in the middle of the other two. All right, so again, if you draw this out on a Cartesian plane, it's not necessarily going to be in this format. It might be just flipped over and rotated or shifted, right? But just in general, just to have something to refer to, we can just keep this diagram like that. But if you want, you can graph it on a Cartesian plane if you want, just to have how it exactly looks like. But even if you do that, you're going to see BC is going to be shorter than AC, and then AB is going to be the longest, um, the longest length. It's going to be the hypotenuse. So, and then we got B, which is negative 5 and 8. Now, when we're finding the area, what's the area of a triangle? Well, it's base times height divided by two, and luckily we're dealing with uh, a right triangle, which is nice because with a right triangle, the area is just the base times the height. The base and the height are pretty much given, right? The base and the height are two of the sides of the triangle, two of the shorter sides. If you're dealing with another triangle, with like an acute triangle or maybe an obtuse triangle, finding that height can sometimes be a little bit of a pain because you got to find that altitude then. And we've gone through a process like that. It's a more complex process. But with a right triangle, it's nice because the base and the height are just the two side lengths. And so the base is, uh, it doesn't matter which one, but Let's go with this diagram here. So the base is the AC, which is the root 234. And then the height is the BC, which is root 104. And then we're going to be dividing by 2. And so from here, what you can do is, if you want, you could get the decimals of these, then multiply them, divide by 2. What I actually recommend doing in a case like this, let's uh, continue this here, is first combining these. Because even though these, are, these two are decimals, if you actually multiply these in your calculator, like actually write them out fully, you're actually going to get an integer, right? And if you round these, if you get the decimals and round them, then you may not get that integer and your teacher may require that. So what I actually recommend doing is when you're multiplying two roots like this that are different, we know just in, uh, just in general that if we have root A times root B, that's equal to root AB. We can just multiply those two. So we can multiply these two and put them under one root. So 234 times 104, that would give us 24,300 and 36, and then we're still gonna be dividing by two, and if you take the square root of that right there, that's actually gonna be a smooth number. It's gonna be 156. Then you're gonna divide by two, you're gonna get an area of 78 units squared. Okay, this is not always gonna happen, so these two are decimals, and then if you multiply them, then sometimes you'll square root this, and it'll end up being a decimal anyway. But sometimes these two can be decimals, but when you combine them, they actually, when you square root them, the square root that product, that multiplication, it ends up being a nice smooth number. So I actually recommend going through that first, just in case your teacher is looking for a smooth answer 
like that and not a decimal answer. All right, so this particular triangle, it's a scaling right triangle, and then that's its area.